Now, the first recorded history of this area of the world was back in the 1500s. A fellow by the name of Esteban Gomez happened to be a Portuguese fisherman. St. John is also known as the Loyalist City. Reason being, after your War of Independence, those that remained loyal to the King of England were referred to as Loyalists. The last foothold that the British had after that war was Manhattan Island. Now all the people that were loyal to the King were virtually chased by the Americans down to Manhattan Island. Washington said, if you're not with us, you're against us, get out. They burnt their farms, destroyed their businesses. The British took them in, they said, because you stayed loyal, we're going to bring you up to this new world, start you all over again, which they did, and some of the families still have the land. And that's going back to, what, 1783? Now, the area we just traveled through was where the Loyalists landed when they brought them up here. There were seven ships that sailed into this harbor. Nothing here. Cedar trees and rocks right down to the harbor. Not even the indigenous people were around. They were inland. Seven, uh, there were seven ships, 3,000 people on those ships. Within that year, another 11,000 joined them. And that group of industrious people made up of all walks of life, clergy, military, professionals, trade people, laborers, went on to create the city of St. John, Canada's oldest incorporated city, 1785. You're in an old town, folks. And it was first brought to Lake Bay way back in the 1500s. Pilgrims didn't get here till 1622, and they were down the coast. Now the next group of people, what happened was the, uh, the French had firmly ensconced in this area for the longest time, then the British, after the signing of the Treaty of Utrecht in 1713, chased them out. You heard tell of the expulsion of the Acadians? They ended up in Louisiana. They came from this area here. Now there's some interesting landmarks coming up and one of them's going to be on the door side as we round the corner and that'll be Partridge Island. The next group of people that come into this area were the Irish. From 1805 to the latter part of the 1800s there were over 150,000 Irish that come into this city. They were quarantined on this island, you'll see it as we round the corner. They were quarantined there until they proved to be healthy or they, or they died, literally died. And that's that island out there, you see it? That would be equivalent to New York's Ellis Island. Now here's the, sta the cenotaph here. You see this concrete? Uh, that's in commemoration of the Irish that died on that island. One year alone, Black 47, 2,000 people perished on that island. Now can you see those three red lights up there? See those three red lights, red lights on the hill? Ladies and gentlemen, they do not constitute the red light district of the city of San Francisco. <laughs> At one time, it was said three sisters would come and sit under those lights, wait for their husbands and lovers to come in from the sea. There was a lot of traffic that went in out of this harbor. Keep in mind, during the age of sail, okay, Dave, Jim, if you'd like, during the age of sail, St. John was the third largest shipbuilding city in the British Empire. During the age of sail, the port of St. John, New Brunswick, had the fourth largest cargo tonnage of anywhere in the British Empire. It'll give you some idea of the wealth and the traffic that was in and out of this port. And there were lives lost at sea, because it's, it's a Bay of Fundy is a deadly body of water. Fantastic tides, fog so thick you can't see your hand in front of your face sometimes. Now with the arrival of the Irish, it turned out to be, well, good for St. John in one way. What happened was, in, seven, in 1877, a massive fire swept through this city, and it started after three weeks of extremely hot, dry weather, something we don't normally get here, and a strong northwesterly wind at the same time. Nine and a half hours later, there was no more city. 1,601 homes and businesses, 13,000 people, to the tune of $27 million of 1877 money. Now, I don't know what that would equivalent to today. After the fire, the city fathers said, never again, huh? They're, they put a bylaw of no more wooden buildings in the city of St. John. That bylaw stayed in effect for about 28 years. Now, what we're gonna be taking you into now is Trinity Royal. This is 20 blocks of heritage, UNESCO heritage homes. In essence, you're looking at a brand new 
1878 city. Because a lot of these buildings were put right back up and within a year, thanks to the Irish laborers' help, anyways. Architects came up from Boston, New York, came across from Europe to help design these homes and businesses. It in, it'll come up and it'll meet the level of the river. 473 miles long. It stops the river's flow. For 20 minutes, the forces are equal. It's called slack tide. It's the only safe time to navigate this body of water. As I say, time, tide, and taxes wait for no man. That tide will continue to come in. Not only has it stopped the river, it turns that river around, sends it back upstream 80 miles. So I'm going to give you a formula to help you understand that. The amount of water that goes in and out of the Bay of Funday every 24 hours is greater than the amount of water that flows from all the world's rivers to the oceans of the world in 24 hours. Remarkable, isn't it? We have four tide changes a day here. The amount of water in just one tide change is enough to fill the Grand Canyon. Now that industry in front of us is Mr. Irving's pulp mill. The river is flowing to the ocean as all rivers do now. She's going into low tide. At full low tide, that river will be whistling through this 300 yard wide gorge and 23 knots faster than the ship you're on to. Now keep in mind, when that tide comes in, it stops 430, 473 miles of river. It stops it dead in its tracks, turns it around, and drives it back upstream 80 miles. So how far upstream are we right now? Not very You're right at the mouth of the river. Okay, so how, is there a town? At the Fredericton, the capital okay. of the province. Uh, before I've had I've had people and I told them that and they've been here and they've seen it and then one time a little old lady in the back of the bus with a squeaky little voice she says oh, I, if your river flows two ways doesn't that confuse the fish <laughs> well yes it does yes it does you're getting those tremendous tides coming in now have a look folks you see all that body of water high tide it's going back the other way almost as fast the St. John River is the only opening off the Bay of Funday in those tremendous tides. We're 28 feet here at the far end of the bay, 53 feet from low tide to high tide, 53 feet. Next recorded history, followed by the name of Samuel de Champlain, good for you, happened to be June 24th. 1604, the day was St. John the Baptiste Day. Thus the river and the city took the name. He got as far as that body of water that everybody's excited about, the Reversing Falls Rapids. Once he got there, one of his crew took a piece of wood, threw it over the side of the boat. It sank immediately in front of him. Champlain did not try to navigate that river. It stayed uncharted for quite some years after that. In return, what he, he turned, went out the Bay of Funday, sailed down and up the St. Croix River, which is the borderline between Canada and the United States, ended up on St. Croix Island in the middle of the river. said, this is a good safe place that the local Indians won't attack us. They didn't know if they were friendly or not. Anyways, make a long story short, folks, bad decision on Champlain's behalf. His ship got frozen in the ice. They couldn't get off the island due to the ice flows in the river. By February of that year, 37 of the crew had died from scurvy. Those same people that they were afraid of, when they were too weak themselves to get up and defend themselves, came onto the island, showed them how to chew spruce gum and make cedar tea to avert scurvy. To this day, the French still refer to the cedar tree as the tree of life.